Black Metal Heads from Finland with the Black Beast second album, which we have here for review. This one is Arctic Darkness, running for some 47 minutes of Nordic Black Metal style. Now, if you remember my previous uh, Black Beast review, you already know that I like the band. And then later on, I also interviewed the guys a couple of years ago. More than that, COVID basically had a couple of years to everything. Anyhow, the thing here is that back in the days, that band was very new and uh, really had no expectations except for the fact that uh, some of these guys are long timers of the given genre. The point here is, whenever a new band emerges and makes its way to the scene, you always kind of have a little bit of questioning like, what are these guys up to? Are they going to do some good music or just add another layer of mediocrity? To the whole game. Now, I'm happy to say, having at least one friend in the band, that uh, this is a good one as a band and as a release. And to be honest, I think the second album, by the way, which has pretty nice and sweet um, Digipack version, is better than the first one. The first one was good, this is that bit better. However, the steps taken are not that big, and uh, of course, it's harder when you're already good, how you really improve from the good. There's always something great and future classics to come, but really it's hard to do such an impact with newer albums and then the ones that were released already decades ago. I mean, after all, we're kind of a prone to the very fact that a lot of our classics, especially in black metal, was re was, were released in the 80s or 90s and not so much after that. However, every few years something spectacular appears and those are indeed the days when you just question whatever I said here. That is, there are future classics to become and this is quite possibly one of them. Why it's not an instant classic is that I don't believe in such um, idea. Why so? Because it's really time that tells when something is really a classic or whether it's just a good album that will be buried by time and dust. But I hope so that this album is not one of those, because in, in my opinion, indeed, Arctic Darkness deserves more attention. Now, as you might have already noticed, I'm doing this video one day ahead of the release date, even though this video is going to be out a little bit later. So dropping the booklet on the floor and making this all comfortable, that's the name of the game. Jokes aside, as you can see, this band is a little bit older than we could expect. Started already some 20 years ago, but nothing really that much happened until 2019 when Nocturnal Bloodlust, the debut album, was released. Why so? I really don't know. And in the terms of this video, I don't really care. We're here to talk about the second album, which then again, indeed, combines elements of various different bands coming from Nordic territory. If I am going to name drop some things, I'm not gonna just do it for one band, I'm gonna mention a couple of bands. Think of early Mortal, think of early Bathory, think of earlier Gorgroth, etc. You could go with on with that list and then you have some a kind of idea what we're talking about here. We could safely say that this is some kind of a early 90s type of black metal, with hints of older than that, that is the Bathory part. But you have parts where this is reminding me of so many different Nordic bands, not just Norwegian or Swedish bands, but in general. There are parts where this could be said like, okay, I heard that element on this section debut album, or say some pure Holocaust material or the like. The thing here is, this is almost like a big nod, like a bowing down towards these classic albums, like an homage to it in so many ways. Yet, at the same time, this is no copycat to a single album on all that stuff. It's more like, more like these guys in the band, they're understanding um, what made Black Metal in the past so passionate, so important, and as such, creating those classic albums. Nowadays, a lot of these bands are basically more like shadows of the past. I mean, they are not exactly as good. Whether we're talking about Immortal, or later Bathory, or Gorgor for that sake, they are not exactly as good as they used to be, unfortunately so. And that's where bands and albums like this come into play. They are stealing your crown and torch and saying like, okay, you're done, you're retired, or ready to be retired, go home and play with your apples, we're gonna take this scene by the storm. 
And mind you, these are not some young guys with the passion and all that stuff. These are roughly the same age, same uh, generation that made those classic albums. So I'm talking about guys who have been there for a long time and are still able to do this kind of a old school black metal, traditional second wave black metal, if you will, and make their own. And still, at the same time, having somewhat uh, original output and also bowing towards these classic names and albums. So in essence, Arctic Darkness is combining all those good elements from various bands and times of the past. That is, you have these kind of a killer riffs and you have fierce blast beats, but also places when times and when things just kind of, a, uh, you know, calm down a little bit. You have a little bit of acoustic kitters, you have a, a lot of reverb in the... Uh, raspy, screamy vocals, and you have the kind of a production that is very, very fitting for this kind of music. So where it goes wrong? Nothing, nowhere in particular. However, there are minor flaws which I would say, or rather address, just, you know, to keep it relatively critical and not just praise it all the way down. For example, when those faster parts like blast beats come into play, it seems like the guitars are a little bit too much on the background and it's just kind of a those drums and vocals also kind of uh, overshadow whatever is going on with the guitars. Also, there are parts with guitars with, where the riffs are not that good. I'm not saying they're bad, but they're kind of a filler parts, like bridges between the better parts. And as such, it results it's not fully golden. Or say, maybe it's golden, but it's not platinum all the way. Nonetheless, this is a good album, and in my opinion, one of the better ones of 2022 when it comes to black metal. One of the best albums to come out in the last couple of months of given year. Uh, who knows what we have still ahead, and probably there are lots of good albums I have missed, but this is still something that I'm very comfortable of saying. You know, this is a good album by a good band, and I totally hope the band keeps once again improving for the third album after the second album, which is indeed a little bit better than the first album. That is not to say you should skip or ignore the first one. It's also a good one. But these kind of albums really give me hope of future black metal. So there it is, out on 25th of November by a primitive reaction. Go check out the samples. At the given time I was, you know, getting this information and links provided, there was only one song available on Bandcamp for this particular album, but that might have changed already by the time this video comes out. So, check out Bandcamp and listen to the samples of the album, and I hope you like it. This is definitely worth buying, and if you're like me, these kind of digibacks folding in multiple ways, so good. So, check out, and I hope you like it. This is Rauta, and uh, see you soon with more reviews coming away.